In the last video, we discussed about mesh architecture that we are going to use in our application. Now let's understand in detail how WebRTC is actually going to work. So here I have created a visual diagram for you. Okay. So let's assume that we have two callers in a room or you can say two persons, you can call them peer. Okay. Now this is our caller. Okay. Which is going to make a call to the callee. So we are calling this right side callee and the left side caller. So the first step is to send a request. Okay. And that is made through a signaling server. You can see here at the top, this is called signaling server. And when this caller wants to make a call to the callee, first it's going to emit an event. Okay. That will be received by signaling server. Then the signaling server is going to emit an event to callee asking that this user wants to connect with you. Okay. And if callee is available, okay, then that information will be sent back to the caller again through signaling server. Now, when the two users are ready to connect with each other, then they need to share some information about their browser and their internet connection in order to be able to establish a direct connection. Okay. So when that audio video call is going to happen, there will be a direct connection. But right now they are just confirming if the other user is available. When that is confirmed, what is the next step? Then the next step is that both the users are going to fetch their IP address information. Okay. They are or their internet connectivity information or uh, information about their browser and all of this information is going to come from another server which is called Eastern server. Here you can see both caller and callee are going to request that data from their Eastern server. Okay. And Eastern servers are public servers that we are going to actually implement in our application. Okay. So after that information is fetched, that information will be again shared with each other or exchanged via signaling server okay and after a lot of negotiation happens okay like the method in which these users are going to connect i'll explain that to you in the next videos so when that is done then there is a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection okay then that means signaling server is not going to help us in exchanging the audio video or the other kind of data that we want to exchange that will be done through a direct peer connection that called WebRTC peer connection. So now you know that this is not a one step process. First of all, there is a signaling server involved in between. Okay. Then there is also a stun server. Okay. And let's now understand what is this stun server. Okay. So what happens sometimes these two users won't be able to connect directly. Okay. That means there are some limitation due to you can say their internet connectivity or their browser due to which a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection won't be possible. So in that case, we create this turn server. Okay. Turn servers are actually private and we are also going to implement one in our application. So we connect to the turn server and the data will be exchanged through a turn server. This is going to act as a intermediate application. Okay. Which is going to actually receive audio and video uh, media streams and uh, that will be exchanged through this turn server. So this is in a nutshell how the audio video call and the chat is going to happen in our app. Now let's uh, summarize what is WebRTC. First thing you need to remember is that it's an open source project. Okay. And what it does, it enables peer to peer communication and it enables exchange of any kind of media. It can be audio, video, or it can be, you can say any kind of image or, or any kind of message. Okay. So WebRTC is going to enable us to do all those kind of things. And the most important part is it doesn't require any plugin or framework. It's an API built into web browsers. Okay. Now it's also good to know which companies or which applications are using WebRTCs. So there are lots of companies, but the famous ones, I'm going to mention it over here. Uh, Google Meet and Hangout, I'm sure most of you have used this. So they use uh, WebRTC to implement functionality in their application. Similarly, Discord and Facebook Messenger are also using WebRTC for their audio video communication.